Please help me decipher my experience. I'm at risk of someone I know IRL finding out who I am from the details of this story. But fuck it. I want to know what happened. Some of my delusions in the episode reference TV shows and video games, but please read anyway. I've posted a little about this on Slash X Slash before, but here's the whole thing. Be me be 19 years old. Be homeless for four months. Neatbox kicks in and moves into a low-income apartment. Not on any psychiatric medication. Now here's the part where I tell most people I don't remember what happened. I tell them it was like I blacked out for three months. But the truth is, I remember bits and pieces of what happened. I don't know how much of this is real and how much of it is fake. So if I say something like, I made matter appear, I'm just saying what I remember. Move into an apartment sudden compulsion to go to the library having metro PCs. Hello, 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 unlimit yourself, stuck over and over in my head. Sometimes changes into vague alternative rock. Compulsion to check out copies of 1984, Animal Farm, and a biography of George Orwell. Take them home. Start deciding I want to map out all my morals into different text documents on my computer. I don't know why. I just had the compulsion to do it. Felt like my mind was unorganized or something. Memory is a little foggy, but the main folder had four folders, and each folder had four folders inside it with text documents, having memories and morals in each folder. Started becoming diluted somehow, and getting into a weird trance-like state. Each section of the four folders had a D, N, or F for wisdom, courage, and power. The fourth section was Z for the empty, hidden, or middle part of the Triforce. I thought I could sort everything in my mind into those four categories. The next thing I know I have the alphabet in a notepad document. Memory of this is foggy. Something about highlighting questions I write, and them becoming answers. For example, I wrote, Who are you? And highlighted it, and it became, Who do you think I am? Foggy. Not sure what happens between that and this next thing. It gets to the point where I think I can do better than God. The Judeo-Christian God. I refer to that god as Try, and believe there are other gods. FYI, I was an atheist. Decide to create my own seven deadly sins. Look up seven deadly sins online, and mine actually just boils down to those. I didn't have them memorized. This maddens me for some reason. In this sort of psychosis or whatever, go to bed and lay down and meditate. I don't know how to meditate. And below, I would like to lease my chi to Mother Earth for 3,000 years thinking I could transport myself 3,000 years in the future. Also bellowed something about how my body was a vessel that I didn't want anymore. I don't remember how I phrased it, how I came up with it, or why I did say it. Suddenly get possessed, get up and start flipping off, showing my middle finger to everything in my apartment screaming about how all these things are harmful to Mother Earth, that Mother Earth isn't interested in my crying in the shower, Apologizing to try, apologizing to Mother Earth, get out of the shower, start, uncontrollably and very loudly, singing human history, from ancient Greek times to the present, or at least my understanding of human history, to the theme of the Super Smash Bros. brawl. When it gets to around 2000, I change the theme song to the theme of Spider-Man, while still singing about human history and the birth of the internet. Kind of foggy stuff. Something about me thinking I'm a god like tree. I think I've created a world and people outside my apartment, and my apartment isn't where it was. Something about me typing on the microwave. Don't remember exactly, but every time I add the number nine, I think I'm creating nine times more people. I think I've created too many people. Scream, let my people go, and press the clear button on the microwave to genocide people. I know that's not what let my people go means, but satisfied with the number of people kind of foggy here again. Asking questions in the microwave, it responds by displaying zero or one, for no or yes. Asking if it's safe to go outside, thinking the new world I created didn't have a breathable atmosphere. Kind of foggy here. Wake up in bed. I see cardboard boxes in my bathroom with star dates on them. See the journal with issue one property of my name written on it. I had forgotten I was keeping track of my diet in that journal, 
and was calling each week an issue, but somehow I read it as a whole sentence. Freak out. I think someone has been using my vessel to do tasks. See the George Orwell's book. Read it as it has another meaning. George Orwellness. One of my mother's cats is named George. Thinking George is more important than me, and somehow that was some kind of threat, and I should continue letting my vessel be used. Wake up every day with more large cardboard boxes with stars on them. Heavy knocking on my door. Ignore it. Crying in the shower every day. Stacking food into pyramids. Something about stacking three tapestries in my room into an X. Explaining that there's no past, present, or future. Put the Zelda Four Swords Adventures box in the middle of the X. Screaming about how time is a four-sorted adventure. Something about stacking the posters in my room together and how my belongings reflected my personality. For some reason, putting GameCube and Y-Discs into the sink and on a Monopoly board, trying to create a world again or something, had extra cheesy goldfish crackers or something, uncontrollably ranting about how it's the big American cheese or something, yelling, follow your nose, find the rat, in Toucan Sam impression. I don't know why exactly. Sniffing out various objects in my room with a goldfish cracker and screaming, Good job, you found the rat. Adding the rats to my pyramids of food, also a pyramid of carrots from my fridge with my glasses on top. I thought it would somehow make my eyesight perfect. All this made sense to me at the time. Foggy memories again. Something about the microwave keeping turning on and me waking up in my bed. And the microwave being a different microwave. Happens a few times. It's 3.33 a.m., been about a week living in my apartment scream, Oh my God, 333! 333 being an evil number was a joke back then or something. Screaming about how on the internet there was something called Operation Exit DOS for people trapped inside the internet to be free. Screaming about freakazoid start screaming, Oh my God, 333 inches while hitting three on the microwave over and over. Microwave turns on keep chanting and screaming until it becomes... Kill my God, 333. Kill my God, 333 inches. The chant just becomes gibberish of ki yu dri ri ri over and over. Wake up in bed again. For some reason, there's a new label on my microwave. Remove protective film before use. Another shower and crying. The police busted down my bathroom door. My mom is there. They put me on a stretcher and I began singing uncontrollably. In the emergency room, there's a lady writing down what I'm singing. They keep asking me for a pee sample, but I thought they were saying pee, but pronounced pee, and I thought it was another word for chi. I sing loudly into the pee container. Here is your pee. My mom at this point is laughing and pissing herself. I say something like, yes, pee for Mother Earth. She's like, stop, son, laughing and pissing her pants. I don't know if this is relevant, but she's actually my dad's ex-girlfriend. But I call her mom because she raised me. I'm put on another stretcher. I ask if these people are people I know from a message board. They say they are. I scream something at them to the tune of the Simpsons theme and yell, Do, 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 while pointing to them, thinking it can make them disappear. I wake up in a mental hospital covered in those sticky rubber EKG things. I see a seductive camera in the room, but... I don't have my glasses, so I think it's the universe torn or something in the glass thing. My attorney appears and says to sign something. I see someone who looks like an old version of my dad and ask him if he's father time. He says to go back to sleep. I say something like, no one fucks with Mother Earth. Well, father time fucked Mother Earth and created me. This gets him mad. He calls the nurses and gives me an injection to put me to sleep. Every time I leave the room, nurses tackle me and take me back to the room. Not aware this was a mental hospital at the time. BTW, thinking it's the future. See the sign out in the hallway with the alien face. Please no yellow bags of flesh. I think only aliens are allowed to be out there. And that's why I keep getting tackled. Soak a red pillow in the bathroom sink. Put it on the bed and lay on it. Trick hospital staff into thinking it's blood leaking from my bed. Something about thinking the pillow tag polyester is an alien material. A more foggy memory wake up in a different room. 
The girl who won't talk to me is there. Um, something about there being multiple versions of me as other patients. One looks exactly like me, but is skinny, with an eye patch, smoke, and a red and black plaid shirt. One looks like me, but has fatter, crooked teeth, and is retarded. Something is happening with running through hallways and getting tackled by hospital staff. Kept hearing Indian flutes. Kept hearing doors slamming. I think at one point they figure I'm recovered and try to take me home. My therapist is there, trying to bring me to the rec center and dragging me around on a ragdoll. Various other weird happenings and waking up in hospitals. These are too hard to place in order. There was stuff like a staff member who kept saying, 5,150 just broke the fourth wall. 5,150 is a 72-hour psychiatric hold. Another staff member kept saying, Don't rock the dragon. Another thing happening is that I am in the mental hospital again. Running around the room making comedy sketches something about rich people's assets being Scooby Snacks. The time will come for them to give it up. Zoinks! Roo roo! And I kept saying, Mormons are morons. In another room I'm sent to in that hospital, I see people watching TVs with Illuminati symbols. In another room I'm sent to, I'm pulled under the door, blindfolded, and put on a large spinning wheel. In another room I'm sent to, I'm rearranging vegetables on the floor and creating spiders. In another room I'm sent to, I hear explosions outside. Oh, no other people have discovered the microwave trick. And the world is ending due to it. In another room I'm sent to, I'm rearranging colored balls on the floor like atoms, planets, Legos, and Monopoly houses. I don't understand either. In another room I'm sent to, I'm pushing these metal designs on the floor around to make a prophecy. In another room I'm sent to, I'm making galaxies and solar systems on the matrix. In another room I'm sent to, I tear a mattress into shreds. In another room I had a dream about Microsoft offering to give me a fake reality of whatever I wanted, and I was suffocating, trying to scream, fuck you. In another room I had a stupid fucking fire alarm. In that same room I recite mysteriousness loudly and annoy my roommate. It's an old English skit I have memorized. Google it some Atlantis satire documentary. In that same room, I'm given a puzzle book to keep me occupied. Some other stuff about solving mysteries in magazines. All this is really hard to explain because the order of events is hard to remember. Something about running from one end of the hospital to the other, smacking into the retarded version of me, and us merging then, I merged the same way with the skinny eye patch me who smoked, was sent to other hospitals too. One of them, this guy with an Arabic accent kept blocking the way out of the room, and I would scream about how he was a terrorist, and he'd let me out. In that same hospital, they wouldn't let me shower, and I was like, I'll prove I'll shower without masturbating, and showered with a nurse watching and some patients, and they were somehow amazed that I didn't masturbate. In this hospital, there was also a girl who materialized and was unstable and spinning like the Tasmanian devil. It looked weird and a guy who refused to eat, was Indian, very old and skinny, and a big, sunny guy with a beard and a yellow shirt. Also I saw Penn Gillette on TV yelling about how he had to sell cars, and he was separated from the teller because of me. Other details of that hospital are too hard to explain. We watched the J. Ward cartoon Super Chicken in black and white and in Spanish. I think I was taken back home again at one point and I ran into the streets singing in the theme of never giving up. We descend from above. Instead of, we're no strangers to love. We gave you tools to learn to fly. Instead of, you know the rules and so do I. I don't remember the other lyrics. Was sent to some outpatient voluntary hospital got picked up by Mystery Inc. Mine is Scooby-Doo. They were paramedics, I guess but they looked exactly like Fred, Velma, Daphne, and Shaggy. Was sent to an emergency room in a tall building. Being blamed for 9-11s, I think they used rocuronium on me. I couldn't move or breathe. I think it was because Shaggy was mad. I said he looked like Shaggy. Then I was singing and Walt Disney had returned from the grave to do Mickey Mouse impressions and make balloon animals to cheer me and other patients up. Then I was sent to another mental hospital. 
At another mental hospital, we gotta go outside and eat ice cream. I thought the guys who gave us ice cream with sunglasses were trying to convert us to Christianity. I saw Penn and Teller outside, but Teller was taller than Penn, and Teller had a blanket and was shivering. Penn smiled, nodded, and telepathically communicated. He'll return to normal. This Mexican lady kept saying I was going to be her brother-in-law. There were aliens working here with loose faces. I was taken to the brainwashing rooms here to return to normal. I had some kind of psychic twin who was dying, which is hard to explain. I was taken back to the apartment at one point. I thought I had learned that I was the reincarnation of Adolf Hitler. I saw Harley being made fun of on South Park. I thought it was unfair and a mockery. How dare they make fun of me and say I would go to hell? In my apartment, my therapist and I are in my living room. I'm drawing a picture as he changes radio stations. Unbeknownst to him and me, I'm actually in the bathroom, so it's a different me. I'm hearing them from inside the bathroom. Another counselor there, me writing that another therapist is a pedophile for some reason, and him trying to shut me up. I screamed from inside the bathroom, counselor yelling about how I made the other me collapse. They are asking me to make the doorknob reappear, explaining what atoms, elements, and molecules I need. Another happening involves me waking up in the emergency room over and over, and shifting to slightly different realities. Saying one of the nurses can talk to animals, and she's a pious Elysian Thornberry extremist. I got circumcised during one of these wakings, but I'm not circumcised now, so I don't know how I can remember being circumcised. One of them involves me being a number or something, which is hard to explain. Eventually, I shift back into this reality's emergency room, taken to another hospital where I met Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, and Linus Torvalds. I think their names are literal. Bill Gates people from going to heaven. Steve gives people jobs. Linus creates a torsion. I thought this was a word. Bill, Steve, and Linus gave us, me and the other patients, apples and bananas every night. There was some guy who looked like he was from Star Trek. Also, there was some Asian girl who kept singing, Don't you need somebody to lean on? Also, there was an Asian guy who kept saying she was his wife. They were both patients, though. And when I told him of my troubles, he kept screaming, What a shame! And I thought they were going to use my skull to create a Wi-Fi signal. And he said, Why fight? Like, Wi-Fi? One of the staff kept saying I was naked when I wasn't and sending me back to my room. He also said I had fur balls when I had coughing fits. Sometimes, when I'd have laughing fits, I'd hear totem, totem, totem in my head. Also, some girl gave me the flower of life. She drew it on paper and I ate it, and she freaked out. She's like, you ate the flower of life? I've never heard of anyone doing this. I said something like, the only thing worse than a Jehovah's Witness is a Mormon. And this girl was like, thanks, I'm a Mormon. They kept trying to sex change a man into a woman through some kind of alien technology. Also, this granny kept talking about being abducted by aliens, and they kept trying to shut her up. She kept mentioning Seth. Jerry Seinfeld was my doctor. We had something where we went around a circle answering a question. It was my turn, and it would have been perfect if I said, never have to. But they skipped me, and someone answered the question a little less cleverly. Also, Tiger Woods was patient there, too. I spoke to Jerry Seinfeld about Jews, circumcision, Muslims, and clitoral snipping. And I was like, So the bagel Jews like to mutilate pensies, and the sand Jews like to mutilate vaginas. This offended the doctor, and I was sent back to the other hospital, the one where I had all the different rooms. Now the staff that said I was naked was being yelled at by a staff member, and I had a coughing fit, and he said, Oh, those are just fur balls. Then Slam knocked him down and I heard his last breath. What did I do? And he died. At this hospital I met the Powerpuff Girls and Professor Utonium. Also a Catholic girl who would cuss, and a girl who I kept calling a robot Furby who said she raped a baby, and a girl who said she was a bee and she needed to get back to her brothers and sisters. Somehow I learned celebs are immortal when they die. When they die, they just become a different celeb, and this is all due to them feeding off me. Also, an android who looked like Ellen DeGeneres worked at the hospital now. 
She'd freak out if I called her Ellen Bitch Bot or Robot. She kept saying I couldn't watch The Simpsons because The Simpsons upset me. She tried to make us watch some boring anime called Three Christmases or some shit. I mostly returned to sanity at this last hospital, was eventually set on a board in care home, too medicated to protest. And they said I wasn't evicted from my apartment. The landlady of the apartment I kept freaking out about in those four months stole all my possessions and claimed I threw them away. I had my dad pick me up and get me off the psych meds. I work and go to school now. No drugs, no hospitals. That's about it. There were other happenings and hospitalizations at those hospitals, but I think I nailed the important stuff. So is this paranormal? If not, then what was it? Why was I experiencing it and why do I still remember it? If it's a mental health thing, what was it? And why was it a one-time deal? That must have been rough. I had a similar experience. There are many explanations for episodes like this. Why were you homeless? Do you have issues with your family? This probably contributed to your decline in mental health. Situations like that can weaken you and open you up for breaks like this. There is a lot of negative energy in the world. And when you're in a vulnerable state, it can take that opportunity to set in. I'm glad to hear you're doing better. Keep improving and focusing on positivity, and things should be all right. The more details I give, the more I reveal about my personal life and risk someone finding out I'm posting about it here. I was homeless because my parents, my dad and his girlfriend who raised me, had split up and apart. Neither one of them could afford to support me. My dad was actually homeless at the time too, but in a different town. My mom, I call her my mom, was living in a third town, barely getting by. All right, I said I'm not on meds anymore, but actually, I was on six meds when I was released to the board and care home, and now I'm on one medication, which I've been on for a couple years. My dad rescued me from the board and care home because they were threatening to put me in conservatorship. And I wouldn't have really had a life anymore if I stayed there. He helped me wean myself off the medications because they had caused me to become severely overweight and I was having tremors. Plus, I was never on psych meds as a kid. I've been stable for a few years now, and I'm living independently, so obviously, putting me on a bunch of medications and locking me up in a board and taking care of me for the rest of my life wasn't appropriate. But yeah, I have some doctors in that town that are after me, so to speak, who still think I belong in a board and care facility, but they have no legal power to do anything. I'm going to bed now. I'm sort of a new fagatino, so... I don't know if it's possible for the thread not to 404 in seven hours, but if this thread is still open when I wake up, I'll answer any other questions. So are you now able to differentiate between what was real and what was actually happening? Did you have visual hallucinations, or was it all internal stuff? I guess I had some visual hallucinations, few and far between, like the no yellow bags of flesh sign. Mostly internal stuff, I guess. And yeah. I can tell the difference between fantasy and reality now. Okay, really going to bed now. It sounds like a textbook case of schizophrenia, but you're not on meds anymore. How does that even work? And why would your dad help you get off them when you had a history like that? Not to mention, why didn't they just medicate you to begin with, if that's apparently what brought you back to sanity? Textbook? How? I've met people with schizophrenia, and it's never a one-time deal with them with a few hallucinations. They hallucinate every day. Desperate bump. I was really hoping there was any other explanation then. It was a schizophrenic episode. It can happen any time again. You're fucked. Go back on your meds like a good little boy. I had no history of hallucinations before the episode, and haven't had any hallucinations since. And I'm stable now. If it really was something medical and not paranormal, then really I guess I doubt it was paranormal. Then is there a name for it? What you experienced sounds like a psychotic episode, and they gave you medications, which probably means that you were diagnosed with schizophrenia. For clarification, schizophrenia is better viewed as a diagnosis performed on symptoms than causes because the psychotic episode leading to the diagnosis of schizophrenia is different for everybody. No two episodes are the same. That being said, 
From what I can read in the story, it sounds almost as if you put a layer of association on top of reality. You describe almost everyone as either a stereotype or a well-known celebrity. And some of the experiences you've had could be seen as you hearing and seeing things around normal events. Relatively, at one point, you actually state that you misheard someone. And the word you misheard was connected to the situation you thought you were in, if this sentence makes any sense. Also, to me, it seems that everything you say could be from things you've read and seen. You state that you sing songs, you know, sometimes with different lyrics, but still tunes you've heard before. That's the best explanation I can come up with. Don't read into it too much, because there is never one true version of the truth when said in words. I hope this helps. If you've lurked long enough, OP, it's the age of Aquarius, and vibration levels are continually rising. I think your schizo episode could be somehow related to that. Apparently, as the vibrational level increases, people who don't know how to deal with it will go mad. My two cents. This is by far the most interesting psychotic episode I've read. Good thing you're all good now, man. Glad to hear that. Stay in school and be sane. I could tell you what I think happens when these episodes come up, but it's kind of useless. It's best to just take it as a psychotic episode. OP, you are a gifted person. Don't let anyone put you down. Batshit insane? Gifted? Nope. Sorry, but insanity doesn't give you any special abilities. It could be that you were on drugs and didn't realize it, perhaps ingesting spiked food or drinks from someone who thought these psychedelics would help you in any way. Changing your diet and source of food discontinued your condition. If it was a one-time thing... Thanks for the responses. Most of my family members agree that it was a psychotic episode. I had one family member suggest it could have been a dissociative fugue, but my experience doesn't seem to exactly line up with what disassociate fugues are. I have a couple of family members who think I was MK Ultra, but yeah, like I said, I can distinguish fantasy from reality now and the idea seems silly to me. But it is interesting to think the situation might have been paranormal, otherwise I wouldn't have posted this in slash x slash. Also, a few of you keep saying I'm schizophrenic, but I've done some research on schizophrenia. And I honestly don't see how one psychotic episode means I'm schizophrenic. I don't hallucinate, freak out on people, chant, or sing anymore. I'm functioning at full capacity. I'm worried about the idea that this kind of episode could occur again. But do you really think the best way to prevent it is to go on a bunch of medications that fatten me up and give me tremors and live in a board and care home? If so, fuck you. I'd much rather live my life and risk having another psychotic episode than live as a mental patient with no future. By the way, my mother did say that during that three to four month period I wasn't violent toward other people. Otherwise, maybe I would consider living on a board and care home for the safety of others. Also, my current diagnosis, the one that my current medication is prescribed for, is not schizophrenia and it is not schizoaffective disorder. But my doctor did note that I have a history of one episode. It's listed in my papers as a manic episode for some reason. Maybe my doctor in this town didn't have enough details. It was probably just a psychotic episode, even if it did last longer than a textbook one. You can't really diagnose a disorder from one episode, so it would be pointless to try. It is most definitely not schizophrenia, yet. And since you've been so long without another episode, it is probable you won't develop it either. You are at heightened risk of another episode, though. And if this happens, you will get a definite diagnosis. Some people just have a higher chance of having a psychotic episode in their lives than others. And it seems you are one of them. I'd reckon that if you keep your life moderately stress-free, then you won't get another one anytime soon. Or at least it won't be as severe or long-lasting. However, what I say really doesn't matter. You should go talk to a psychiatrist or psychologist about your episode. It's obvious it still bothers you, so it'd be a good idea to talk to professionals about it. When you do go to them, however, you have to make it clear that you don't want any more medications. They have to respect your choices, and they can't really force anything on you. Talking to them might help with the unresolved issues you have with what happened, though, so I highly suggest you go. Good luck, OP. Hey, stalker. Hope you enjoyed the video. I could trouble you, 
Give a like and a sub, it really helps the cause. And since you're already here, why not watch the next video? Anyways, stay comfy. Cortisol is bad for you.